Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a dramatic portrait neon effect. Before we begin, if you are not already a subscriber to my channel, smash that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. I provided a set of custom smoke brushes that we'll use later. Its link is in my video's description or project files. Open a photo that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The effect will look best when the background is dark and your subject is lit at an angle, so it has a lot of shadows. First, click your foreground color to open the color picker. Pick a bright color for your neon. Then press Enter or Return. Notice your foreground color is now the color you just picked. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. I'm using a brush size of 12 pixels, but feel free to adjust this amount based on the size of your photo and its resolution. The hardness is 0% and its opacity and flow are 100%. Open your pen tool and choose Path. Place it where you'd like your shape to begin. Click and release. Place your tool at a second location and click to make your first work path. Release and place your cursor at its third location and click and release. To complete my path, I'll click back on the first point. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. Place your cursor directly on the path and right click or secondary click to open the flyout list. Click stroke path. When you see this panel, pick Brush. To hide the path, press Ctrl or Command H. Double-click the top layer to open its layer style window. Click Inner Glow and the color box. Pick White. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 100%. The technique is softer the source is center, the choke is 0%, and the size is 6 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Click Outer Glow and the color box. Pick the same bright color as you picked earlier. The blend mode is linear dodge, the opacity is 50%, and the size is 20 pixels. Click Drop Shadow and pick the same color. The Blend Mode is Linear Dodge, and the Opacity is 70%. The Angle is 30 degrees, the Distance and the Spread are 0, and the Size is 40 pixels. Let's save some space in the Layers panel by collapsing the effects. Make a new layer, and reveal the path by pressing Ctrl or Command H. Open your Brush Tool, and Brush Picker. I'll make its size 125 pixels, but again, feel free to adjust the amount. Press P to open your Pen Tool, and right-click or secondary-click directly on the path. Click Stroke Path, then click OK. Hide the path. Change the Blend Mode to Linear Dodge, and reduce the Fill to 30%. If we reduce the Opacity instead of the Fill, the neon tube wouldn't be as bright. To illustrate this, I reduced the opacity instead of the fill to show you the difference. We'll place the two layers that comprise our neon into a folder. Shift-click layer 1 to make it active as well, and press Ctrl or Command G. Let's name it Neon. To hide the neon behind our subject, click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the folder. Make the subject active. We need to make a selection of our subject. There are many ways to select it, however, for the purposes of this tutorial, open your Quick Selection tool. If you're using version CC2018 or later, click the Select Subject button, which automatically selects our subject. If you're using an earlier version, drag the Quick Selection tool over the inside of your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Open your Brush Tool and make the Layer Mask active. Brush over the area of the neon that you'd like to mask out. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Make a new layer 
and click this icon to invert your foreground and background colors. You can also press X to do this. Click the foreground color and pick black. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Change the Blend Mode to Linear Dodge and reduce its fill to 40%. Next, we'll confine our smoke to just around the neon light. Place the clouds into a folder. Let's name it Smoke. Alt-click or Option-click the Layer Mask icon to make an inverted layer mask next to the Smoke folder. Press B to open your brush tool and change its size to 500 pixels. Unhide the path and press P to open back your pen tool. Right-click directly on the path and click Stroke Path. Then hide the path again. Make the Clouds layer active and make an inverted layer mask next to it. Open back your brush tool and open your brush picker. After you install the brush set I provided, open it and pick a brush you like. Feel free to experiment with them until you find one you like. I'll click Smoke 9. To adjust its size, make sure your caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Click once to stamp your brush onto your image. What you're actually doing is stamping white onto your layer mask, which is revealing the green clouds through the white areas. Think of layer masks as stencils. The white areas reveal the layer next to it, while the black areas conceal it. You can stamp the brush at various angles by either opening back your brush picker and rotating the arrow on this widget, or by pressing R on your keyboard as you rotate your canvas. I prefer this method since I can immediately see how the angle looks on my image and can make rotate adjustments much quicker. To rotate it back to its original angle, press and hold Shift plus R as you rotate it until it snaps back in place. Close the folder and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Reduce its fill anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. Make your subject active. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Check Colorize. For the Hue, type in 120. For the Saturation, type in 100. And for the Lightness, type in minus 25. Click the Adjustment Layer icon again and click Curves. The Curves panel basically shows the tonal range of an image from the darkest to the lightest along a diagonal line on a graph. We can adjust our image's highlights, midtones, and shadows by simply dragging the line. Go to the middle of the line and drag it straight down to approximately here. Right now, the Curves Adjustment layer is affecting the Hue Saturation layer as well as our subject. However, we don't want it to affect Hue Saturation. To resolve this, drag the Curves layer below Hue Saturation. Next, we'll remove some of the green color cast from our subject's darkest tones. To do this, double-click an empty area of the Hue Saturation layer to open its Layer Style window. We'll use Blend If which uses luminosity to blend layers. This layer represents our active layer, which is the hue saturation adjustment layer. The underlying layer comprises all the layers below hue saturation. We can make smooth transitions by Alt or Option clicking in the middle of this triangular shape. This splits the shape in two. Drag the right half approximately this far. The more you drag it, the more it punches the darkest tones of our subject through the green smoke. Reduce the fill to 50%. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.